What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about exciting new distortion effects you can do within Adobe After Effects. But I also wanna announce the Psychedelic Master Pack, over 41 different presets, a ton of these tools that you see in these modern music videos. This is definitely my most ambitious effect pack yet. I wanted to take a lot of the crazy distortion that previously was only available in expensive third-party plugins and give you access to those cool looks at an affordable cost. I designed them so you have full control over every part of your scene. There's there's presets for motion warping animations that pop up behind your subject, there's presets for trippy looks on your subject, and there's liquid distortion transitions with customizable patterns using pre-rendered alpha maps that come included with the pack. Tons of awesome stuff, full tutorial that shows you how to install, how to use everything that I just mentioned. All in all, an awesome tool and my biggest After Effects preset pack drop yet. But anyways, they will be available on my website. I'll leave the link at the top of the description if you are interested. So now onto the actual tutorial. Let me show you a lot of what's going into this new style distortion, like Kochi's Do It Again, uh, Pocket Rocket, a ton of his other videos. I'll just play you a little snippet right here so you can see some of the craziness that's going on in this video. All these liquid motion effects, all these background effects, a lot of isolating the layers, a lot of smooth motion. All right, guys, so we're gonna hop into After Effects here, and I'm gonna show you some ways where you can use After Effects to create some crazy distortion. Uh, we have Kochi's Do It Again, and there's some really amazing effects like this one where you have this crazy uh, behind the back effects with a bunch of different distortion techniques, a bunch of really cool glowing color and things happening in the background. So let me talk about how we can make something like that, and then we'll go through and just go over some other quick and easy ways where you can use distortion in After Effects to create some cool effects. So whenever you're creating these behind the back effects or whenever you wanna distort a specific thing in your scene, you need to isolate the layer. So to do that, you want to rotoscope. So I'll start from scratch, I'll we'll go ahead and delete this. This is just our base normal footage. And to rotoscope, very simple, you just double click on your footage and make sure you're in a layer. Then you go ahead and grab your roto brush tool and we'll scroll to the beginning and you just click and make this green line on the subject. And you'll see this purple outline. You can hold down Alt and delete away from there and just try and get that outline around where you want it to be. So once you have that purple line around, you want to click page down or page up to move frame by frame. You can see I'm moving to the next frame here and you just wanna make sure this purple line stays around your subject. If anything messes up along the way, you can use those green and red brushes to fix it. They have a new and improved algorithm for this, which actually makes it really easy. I mean, I only had to do it once on the first frame and I don't think I'll have to make any adjustments here. Maybe like the corner of the ear there if I really wanted to. So once you're ready, go ahead and make sure this line Line here is set to the duration for where you want to freeze so that's fine and then go ahead and click freeze all right so this will be ready once you're done you go over to the composition to see that finished and if I toggle the transparency you can see this is now a transparent background so we erase the background from this clip we still have the foreground now what you want to do when you're isolating these layers you want to bring that background back so you select this layer here and you click Control D to duplicate and then we can click on this bottom duplication and I'll rename this to background and we'll go to the effect controls of that and just delete the roto brush. So essentially we have our clone with the cutout and then we have just our normal footage with the background, nothing changed. So that allows us to do a bunch of different things. We can go and grab some distortion plugins that are built into After Effects. You'll see you have this whole distort folder. One of the big ones is Turbulent Displace, and of course we'll talk about this in a bit. But if I was to place this on just the clone layer, you're gonna see it's going to distort just the clone here and not the background, as opposed to if we didn't rotoscope and we put it here, and it's kind of hard to tell because this is a blank background, but if there was other things in the background here, this would be distorted as well. So that's why we do that, because we can isolate and choose different things. Now what you can also do here, so you can duplicate again. So we'll take our top clone, control D, and we'll rename this to middle. So now if I put turbulent displays here, you can have things behind your clone, as you can see. So you create sort of a sandwich with the layers here. So that's our basics for setting this up. Now let's actually talk about how to create some of this unique looking distortion like we have here. So the secret to these giant crazy light tunnels is using the twirl effect in After Effects. So let me show you, let me show you how we can set that up. Let's go ahead and do it on our middle clip here. Uh, first of all, we can create some crazy color. So I'll go to Colorama and place it there. And if I hide our top, 
Uh, you can see if we go to our effect controls and our output cycle, you have a bunch of nice little um, preset color looks here. If you just kind of go through and choose whatever, uh, there's like fire and smoke, which is pretty cool. And of course you can change the colors. You can do a bunch. So great for just adding some unique color, thermal looking color. Now you can also go to turbulent displace and we'll just kind of make this look a little bit crazy, you know, something like this. And we'll bring that back. So here's what it's looking like so far. That's if you want just a normal sort of like blob background. To add the twirl, let's go ahead and add a transform onto here, onto our middle clip, and we'll scale it up. So let's just put it up to 200. If you go too crazy with that, you might crash your computer. So just keep it at 200. Let's also go and add a CC lens. What we're doing here is we just wanna sort of stretch this so that it's taking up the full size of the screen. So you can take the size here, you can mess with the convergence, and I think that looks pretty cool. Now what we can do is we can add in our twirl. We'll drop twirl on there, and now let's just take a look at what this is looking like. So for our twirl, you'll see if I take our angle and just keep cranking it, twirling that you saw in that example that I showed you at the beginning. You can also take your twirl radius, so if I was to crank this, and you play with that, you can see it's twirling a little bit less or a little bit more. And all you really need to do once you've set that up is set up a little keyframe. So we'll set that to zero and we'll go ahead and start at the beginning and then we'll just click and keyframe all of these values for twirl. Then we'll drag to the end of the composition and we'll just give it a bit of twirling. So maybe like two rotations, um, play with the settings again just mess around with it until you really get it looking the way you want of course what you guys want to do here is go to your effects go to twirl and you can change around the keyframe timing here once you play back that animation so you can see how fast everything is going you can click s on that middle layer and scale it up and then you can go in and add a glow so we'll go and add the base after effects glow onto here and what you wanna always do is mess with the threshold just to see what it's affecting, and then take the radius and bump that up so you can actually have the glow start to pop in. So pretty cool background effect with the swirling, just using twirl. And again, all the other things in here are really just some, um, really just some different ways to stylize the look of the twirl. These are all really optional. If you take off Colorama, it's just gonna be the actual look of the layer. And of course you want, you can go in and change that color if you want, Turbulent Displace. It's not doing too much. Um, it's just sort of, it's just sort of distorting things off the beginning. But of course you guys can mess with if you want that or not. Transform again, that's just to scale it up. Uh, if you can do that with just the layer as well, so maybe keep the transform off, and I think that looks pretty sick. I think that looks pretty cool. You can also take your CC lens. Again, these are all just different little tools. All right, so let's go and delete the twirl, and let's just talk about some different interesting ways where you can use distortion to create behind the back effects. And we're gonna delete the, or we'll actually hide the colorama for now. We might bring that back later. Now, what I thought was really cool was the ability to use this turbulent displace, which we applied before. We just slapped one of these um, basic ones on here and just kind of turned up the amount. What I like is the ability to sort of have this weird trippy face peeking out from behind of our layer. So we can go ahead and let's just delete this for now. Go ahead and scale. We just scaled it up a tiny bit. It's fine. Let's go and place the turbulent displace from scratch. So we'll put that on our middle clip. Now I like going with the turbulent uh, bulge smoother. So this one here. And then what I like to do is take the amount and just crank that up, take the scale and crank that up. And you really get these cool sort of weird transformations of whatever your subject matter is peeking out from behind. So you can see the eye here. You guys can mess around with this. Uh, maybe the complexity if you want to sort of like crunch it a bit more. And again, if you wanted to go off the original example here, if you wanted to take what I just showed you there and kind of build on it, add the crazy color, add the flickering, turn back on that colorama effect or just apply it from scratch and then go in here, let's go to maybe hue cycle and create whatever custom colors you want. And then a bonus little tip here, take this cycle repetitions slider for colorama and you just keep cranking that up and you see it go from something like this to something like this. So really just crunching the color. Then you mess around with your slider. So let's go to the CC lens. You can use the size here. Again, we applied this earlier with the twist. You can use the size to sort of create a little animation. So we can go to the beginning, keyframe our size on our CC lens, drag forward and just have it 
go up like that. So what you're gonna see once we bring back our top clone here, our top rotoscope layer, you have this sort of circle emerging from the bottom. So it gives it a little bit more of a transition aspect, um, not just kind of showing up from scratch, it kind of comes out from the back, looks pretty cool. You guys can mess with the layers, maybe cut at a certain point like right here, Control Shift D and delete this top part and then use this as like a little transition. All right guys, now the last thing I wanna show you, and this is a little bit of a less sexy workflow, but nonetheless, doing this can really create some really interesting looks, and that is creating displacement maps. You may be familiar with the After Effects uh, effect displacement map. We talked about this a bunch in the past, so you have this displacement map effect, and you can go ahead and take this horizontal displacement or vertical displacement and kind of create some weird, um, looking distortion. So you may be familiar with that, but the real way to use this is by actually loading in a true displacement map layer. You'll see it's asking for one here. Whenever you don't load one in, it just kind of looks weird. We'll hide the displacement map for now. We're gonna go to our project bin and we're gonna create a new composition and I'll name this displacement maps. And for some reason this is vertical, fix that. What I recommend you do is use shape layer. So you can use the tool up here. You can alt click it to switch between different shapes. So let's think about what distortion map we want to create. Let's kind of create like a ring that goes towards the camera. So we'll do something like this. I'll click V and just kind of center that. And let's open the contents of this ellipse. We'll go to fill and we want to put that at zero. Let's just have it be a line, so a ring. And then we'll take stroke. We'll take stroke width and just bump that up. What we're gonna do is just have this ring fly towards the camera. So we'll go and shut contents. Uh, again, this is all just shape options if you guys wanna mess around with the shape. We'll go to transform and I'm gonna keyframe everything at our starting position. And then I'll just scroll, uh, this is sort of a long composition, so I'll go maybe like three seconds and I'll just scale this up. So here's what we made. Animation of our circle scaling up. And again, pay attention to your anchor point. If we select here, you'll see the anchor is sort of in this top weird position. Um, you can grab this tool, pan behind or anchor point tool, and you can adjust where the anchor point is, and that's going to adjust where it scales from. So there we go, now it scales from the center. So keep that in mind, if I was to put it here, it's gonna be all weird. Okay, so anchor point's good. Now what we can do here is we want to blur this. So we're gonna go and look up a Gaussian blur. You guys, you guys can use any other blur, there's a bunch of them, and we'll just bump up the blurriness. So we have a white ring going like that, very simple. Let's go back to our composition. And let's go ahead and just do this on the background layer for now without everything else distracting. So we'll go and add a displacement map effect. And then we'll go to our project bin and we'll drag in uh, that displacement map composition. And you can just hide it for now. Now click on our background layer, go to your effect controls and use this displacement map effect and set the displacement map layer as that ring that we set up. So this displacement map composition. Now, whenever you guys go through and use this displacement, whether you're changing through the red green channels, again, you can change the channel for your displacement. So let's put it at maybe lightness and lightness. Now, whenever you guys go like this, it's only going to respond where our displacement map layer is located. And you'll see for some reason, um, this is set to center map, which kind of makes it cut off in the middle. Make sure you change the displacement map behavior to stretch map to fit. And now you get something really cool, sort of like a distorted ring that's floating throughout. So you guys can do that with different patterns. You can also do tile map, which is just basically going to repeat this. And of course you guys can change around any of these. You can keyframe this. Um, and there's a bunch of different looks throughout. So the reason why this is relevant is you can create different patterns from that composition. So let's set that to stretch map to fit. Again, it's just a circle going forward, kind of cool. If we go back into displacement maps, so double click into that comp, and let's go ahead and just hide this shape layer. Let's make um, like a star this time. Go to fill, put that at zero, and we'll give it some stroke width. So basically the same thing, you can copy and paste the blur from this layer to this layer. Now let's go back here and you're gonna see you have a completely different pattern from the start. So you can create so you can create specific displacement maps that react with specific effects. So that is some basics on creating that new age sort of distortion, utilizing some of those effects and techniques 
um, especially again making sure that you isolate your background so that you have full control over your scene over the foreground what's behind the foreground um, and the full-on background very important and then using some of those distortion techniques that we talked about um, like the ones we mentioned here as well as talking about creating those displacement map compositions which you can use with the displacement map effect alternatively you can also use them with my presets here there's a few effects which don't use displacement maps which use things like caustics uh, where you can create your own custom displacement maps using that tutorial and you can use them with my presets to create some crazy looking liquid things like this so you can use that to create custom ones or or if you do choose to download the psychedelic pack it'll come pre-packed with a bunch of rendered out alpha maps displacement maps which you guys can use i hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial again i want to teach you guys a lot of these different techniques so you have a good idea of what's being used while also providing you with tools to save you time if you guys don't understand how these tools are used you're going to struggle a lot if you're only relying on just using presets presets are a tool to be used in conjunction with your knowledge of how to use the software so make sure you know how to actually isolate the layer like i mentioned before so that you can actually even use presets properly and make sure you know things about distortion so you can customize things to your liking change things up depending on the footage depending on the look you're going for but anyways guys thank you so much for watching any relevant links will be in the description and i'll see you guys in the next one